Okay, this is a C-130 E model, and we're set up right now for uh, about 40 jumpers, and we're gonna have uh, 30 jumpers jumping today. Uh, my name is uh, Master Sergeant Seda. We are stationed at uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. Um, we're here to entertain, see a uh, part of the United States Army, show everybody what we do, what we enjoy. What, uh, what jump is this for you, what number? Uh, number eight. Uh, first uh, iteration. How about you? What's your name? Where are you from? My name's Allie Sanders, and I'm from Fort Lewis. And uh, I don't know what jump this is. I lost count at 10, so I don't know. Um, PFC Curtis. I'm out of Fort Lewis, Washington. I was uh, for a Special Forces unit. Uh, this is going to be my seventh jump. So uh, I'm kind of nervous about landing on the tarmac because it's going to hurt. But other than that, it should be pretty good. What they'll do is they'll stand at a six minute call, they'll stand up, put the chutes up to these cables here, and two minutes out, the jump master will look, make sure we're at the right spot, and then he'll step back in, step back into here, and a 30 second call, he'll look out, he'll see his mark, he'll tell the other guys to stand them up, close them up to the door here, and then a green light, which is right up here, so just tell them to go, and then the, the guys will just stream out, and we'll be streaming out both sides today. What jump is this for you? Ooh, what, number eight. You nervous? <laughs> nah, it's fun. How about you, nervous? Always nervous. Have you ever landed on a tarmac before? No, oh, that's, man, yeah, you? that's, it's the only thing, that, yeah, that might, it's kind of wow. hard. So you got the pads and everything for that? Yeah. But the pads are just, <laughs> it's a mind thing, it's still gonna hurt. <laughs> And this is what they call a static line jump. It's no free fall. They're already hooked up. The, uh, so the parachutes open automatically as they leave that aircraft. There's one, there's two, three, four, five, six. There's their plane. The jumpers everywhere. All right. And you'll notice these parachutes are unlike the one that our flag jumper brought in. These are the... Uh, traditional style parabolic parachutes. Not nearly as controllable as the uh, Ram Air parachutes. They do have some controllability, but this is the standard military parabolic air uh, parachute. All right, jumpers are down. All right, Twin Falls, let's give it up for all these great paratroopers, the Special Forces Unit. Thank you all so much for being here with us this weekend. We really do appreciate it. easy tell us about it well this isn't the typical airplane you notice the first thing different about this is the nose is on the ground and there's a wing in the front instead of the back my main wings in the back instead of a rudder in the back I've got two rudders out on the wingtips okay, the biggest question when people first see this airplane is how do you get the nose up I hear all kinds of stories but the best story is actually so good it's unbelievable Watch, I'll show you. Now, the best angle is you gotta step back a little bit. Look underneath the airplane. There's a door that's gonna open. Just like a Flintstone door. I hop in, stick my feet out the bottom, pick the airplane up, and I run really fast. Okay, like I said, 
This story is so good, it's unbelievable. So for the rest of the story, I do have nose gear. If people want to know why, why is this configuration like this, there's a big engine in the back, nobody in the front right now, so if you remember when we were little kids and we played on the teeter-totter, one person hops off, when he's on the ground, the other person goes down really fast. This airplane will fall over backwards. It needs some weight in the front. So to compensate when it's parked and nobody's in, you just park it on the nose. Now, at this point, I would have to physically hop in the airplane. My weight will hold it down and I can go flying. Right down on the deck, it's Juan Arnold of Huntington, Utah. All right, let's watch him do it. The long easy. And the knife edge flight. It looks like flight. I'm flying right now. I'm rolling out. I'm just going to fall in over the top. It's a very high performance airplane. It's a great airplane for air shows because it uh, is obviously fast, but it also has a relatively big wing, so I can do a lot of maneuvering relatively close to the crowd. Uh, and I do combinations of loops and rolls and, and inverted flight and things of that nature uh, that you would see uh, most jets do uh, as they perform in an air show. Uh, but you know, I typically pull up to around 7 G's and a lot of my passes will range from about 400 miles an hour to almost 600 miles an hour and many times it'll just be around 50 feet above the ground so uh, things happen very quickly and as they happen very quickly uh, you know obviously uh, it, it gets very exciting. 7 G's, what, what does that feel like in, in kind of layman's term? Yeah well a G of course is, is, is essentially the weight of your body, if you will, and gravity. So take seven times the weight of your body and put that pressure on you. And that would be the equivalent of seven Gs. In fact, many people will pass out uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five Gs, and in particular if they don't breathe correctly or if they don't have tolerance for it. So you've got to be in shape? You need to be in shape. Uh, interesting enough, uh, the more muscle you have, the more G tolerance you typically have because it allows you to squeeze from your legs and your stomach to keep the blood up into your head. This, this right here is an actual ejection seat that goes into one of my hunters, one of the planes like just what I spoke about earlier, my hunter that I'm going to fly in the air show. And basically there are two handles here. This one's out of the airplane <clears throat> because we repack the parachutes every, every uh, 120 days. And what you see here are these two handles. So what happens is this pin right here, right before you take off, you take this pin out and you take a pin in the lower part of the seat right here and that makes the seat live. Now there are a couple of other pins that you pull, but you do that before you even start taxiing the airplane out. If you pull this handle or you pull this handle, this chute or this, this seat comes up out of the airplane automatically. The seat falls away, the parachute deploys. There's nothing for the pilot to do. It happens all by itself, uh, and which, is a, which, is, um, which is what's great about modern ejection seats. Uh, that they save lives. Airplane originally was equipped with 30 millimeter guns firing 6,000 rounds per minute. Can take seven positive G's and three and a half negative G's of force.
from our right for the photo pass, Steve Appleton and the Hawker Hunters. And he's going to come right down. Where is he? Where is he? There he is. Look at the tail slide. He got in. The torque roll. Airplanes are not supposed to do that. But Rob makes it happen. from Utah State University, and this is the Utah State University Wright Flyer, built out primarily out of all composite material, powered by Harley-Davidson engine, and uh, let me tell you that this aircraft has about 365 flights on it as I speak. Uh, you just, we just completed three flights with it. Uh, it's flown uh, up to 12 minutes at one time. We built by the students and faculty at Utah State University. And with me right now is Mark Karpowicz of Utah State. Mark? Yeah, we built our Wright Flyer out of uh, what the Wright brothers would, would use if they were in the world today building an aircraft. And then we're, we're using new age uh, carbon fiber, wavy form carbon fiber, which is 90% absorbable of radar, so it's also a stealth airplane. We've seen some pretty high performance airplanes out here. Uh, this definitely is not high performance. How fast does it have to be going to take off? We usually take off at around 35 miles per hour. The aircraft that you see it flying right now is flying at around 60, and it will stall at around 32. get up one foot on here and then get up and stand on the seat and, and get your other leg in and then once you're standing on the seat then stand down with a foot on the tray on either side and and uh, and then hunker down otherwise if you 